How to Prosper During Times of Famine God's message for you today comes from the book of Ruth, the first chapter starting with the sixth verse. Your story today is about a man by the name of Elimelech, his wife Naomi, and their two sons Malan and Chelion, who later were married to Orpah and Ruth. At the time this story takes place, there was a harsh famine in the land of Judah, and Elimelech and his family without prayer, without seeking advice for directions from the Lord regarding their future, left the land of promise to go reside in Moab, a place that the Lord warned them against inhabiting. They did not seek the face of God before making and acting on their independent decision to run to this strange land. Because due to the famine desperate thoughts set in and caused them to take their eyes from the Lord to focus on their own reasoning. You see, this was not the first time there was famine in the promised land, and although during previous times in which it was established that these famines never would last forever, and God remaining faithful. Despite his faithfulness to his people who were aware of his powers, aware of his generosity, and his problem-solving capabilities, this family decided to ignore his wishes and his plans for their lives. They had become fed up, discouraged, impatient, and not trusting that God would take care of them, despite knowing he had the power to change their situation with just a simple thought. These feelings led them to make decisions to fall into a state of blind, uncharted unconsciousness, causing them to turn their backs against the direction of the Lord and instead, go to take residence in a place declared unholy, by God Almighty Himself. Brothers and sisters, we are no different today from families of the past, many a times we exhibit patterns in our behaviors and actions which stimulates us to make the same or similar, rash decisions like Elimelech did for him and his family, whenever faced with adverse circumstances. Decisions to move to another country, decisions to cross state lines or maybe just across town on our own accord, looking for relief, seeking diverse opportunities of every sort, without first consulting God, without asking Him to take the lead in making those decisions for us. The impact becomes devastating on our plans for prosperity because as we walk, run or ride further north, east, south or west, our eyes become open wide, like Eve's did when she bit the fruit, as we realized we're drifting away from the path God had so meticulously prepared for us the whole time. The truth of the matter is that, when we move outside the accordance of God's will, despite the attractive lure of activity or activities involved, we at times will attract circumstances that become more difficult than we can bear. Reasons for failure usually results from the fact that those decisions were made with our human intellect, human wisdom and foresight which, without God's influence, get us only as far as the next traffic light. What we thought were intelligent, well-executed and fault-free plans for prosperous living, oftentimes turned out to be a complete fiasco, because our plans were self-reliant and constructed from thoughts coming from our sinful and limited thinking. As those circumstances continue to blight our expectations and feelings of dismay sets in, as resentment and disappointments covers us in a blanket of despair, many begin to blame God for their demise. We are told from scriptures that, the wisdom of this world is as foolishness to God. So with him being the source of ultimate wisdom, the everlasting know-all for the entire world, it only makes sense to consult with him on every occasion, if we are to achieve successful outcome. Amen. In the book of Genesis 26 verses, 1, 4 and 12 to 13. The Lord warned Isaac not to leave the promised land because of the famine taking place there at the time, just like in our previous story but that he should instead stay and plant crops. Isaac made a choice to obey the request of the Lord, and the results were amazing. Let's discover some of what took place there. The Lord never promised us a life totally free from the challenges of this world, but he did promise an everlasting life free of challenges in the world yet to come. Amen. The challenges we at times experience while living inside the borders of God's directives for us, in intentional, committed obedience to him, are a test of our faith, patience, our commitment, and a test of our love for Him. The challenges one faces while living outside of the parameters of God's will do to intentional disobedience, are challenges yielding horrific results which are self-inflicted in nature and can be credited to the price one pays when there is a deviation from the loving will of God. Your personal covenants made and kept with God are some of the most powerful agreements you can arrange with Him as you go through this life. Notice how Isaac was blessed and would never experience the effects of the famine because of his father's obedience to God? Notice how some upstanding Christian families today like Isaac, always reflecting light, 
reflecting positivity and radiating with godly grandeur, despite a recession or other forms of an economic backslides. They always give glory to God regardless of adverse circumstances surrounding them. This is because they understand the famine concept. They know that God will provide for them when they obey His will. He will make them fat during times of lean, because of their trust in Him, praise the Lord. So whether we are experiencing times of economic meltdown, a meltdown globally, locally or personally, experiencing a meltdown in our marriages, friendships, a meltdown at our places of employment, a spiritual meltdown or any other situation that puts pressure on us to make decisions and thoughts, or to make plans to relocate elsewhere in a manner deemed rash, experience times and circumstances that makes one oblivious of wanting to consult with God Almighty first, and instead opting to seek relief and great advice from a neighbor or stranger instead, it is time to stop, to stand firm and fearless in the face of adversity, in the face of difficult and troubling challenges, knowing that God can make things better in the blink of an eye. As you are tested, remember that God brought you to the test because He has the confidence in knowing that you will trust Him to lead you through it. Without the test, there is no testimony as to the greatness of our God. The battle has been won, the victory already yours. Claim it now as you call on His name and just be still while you wait for your miracle. Amen. There is no longer any need to run to this one, or that one, or got to this place or that place whenever there are challenged, but take it to the Lord in prayer and wait upon Him, because whatever it is, it will soon be over. Claim your victory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Repeat with me. I will claim my victory in the name of Jesus. The psalmist in Psalm 30 verse 5 tells us that. In his favor is life, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. In the book of Micah 7 verses 7 and 8, we are encouraged during times when difficult circumstance may come among us, to say these words with confidence, Therefore I will look unto the Lord, I will wait for the God of my salvation, my God will hear me. Amen. Psalm 37 verses 3 to 7, tells us to, Trust in the Lord, and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him, fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices. Psalms 34 verses, 19 to 22. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them trust in him shall be desolate. Amen. Hebrews 10, verses 35 to 39 outlines a few things that ensures success during times of famine. Cast not away your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and that will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Amen. Habakkuk 3 verses 17 to 19. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat, the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord is my strength, and he will make my feet like hinds feet, and he will make me to walk upon mine high places. Family listen. Your biggest testimony is waiting for its appointed time to take place. Whatever it is that is that may be creating a famine in your life at the moment, wait on the Lord. Don't be hasty and make panic-stricken decisions you will regret. It will soon be over. Your testimony, your victory, is just around the corner. Wait I say, wait on the Lord. Amen. Many Christians in search of a solution for their encounter of a famine after turning deaf ears to the voice of the Lord, squanders precious time and resources going from one house of prayer to another, seeking solutions for circumstances which were completely avoidable. Many admit they are still left feeling empty at the end of their quest because of their choice to disobey clear instructions of the Lord. As Naomi was commuting back and forth from Judah to Moab, 
her husband and her two sons passed away. During that time the Lord brought to an end the situation they were running away from. The people who followed the command from the Lord to stay and to patiently wait through the famine were the ones now enjoying all the benefits of God's commands. My prayer for you brothers and sisters is that you will never find reason to run away when the Lord instructs you to stay. When he tells you trust his voice and to wait throughout the famine, because you are on the verge of your divinely scheduled breakthrough. God doesn't want you to miss your appointed miracles that he'll use to will deliver the rich provisions he has in store for you. Sometimes he wants to see if you will be capable of handling the seasons of prosperity he is about to relinquish. He wants to have you demonstrate how the impact of lack affects your mind, affects your situation, and if it creates a shift in your character, or does it cause you to focus and call on him more. He wants you to recognize those who will turn their backs on you, to pray for them. He wants you to those who are true friends that will be by your side the way he is. He wants you to use the time to wipe clean your agendas of distractions between you and him, and to make your life simple because habits that are formed around extravagance and excess are sometimes the very reason for your famine. He wants you to use those hunger-driven moments to seek for the manna, the life-giving, life-sustaining food found in his holy words, the living Bible. Thank God that after all the things that took place in Naomi's life had come to a mind-bending climax. She swallowed her pride to return to the land of promise. Some people because of stubborn pride would say, it is better to die here in a strange land than to face the shame of going back to God's people. Vanity and pride is going to cost many the gift of eternal life. I'm here to tell you that it is better for the prodigal sons and daughters of God's church to come back home than to remain and die in strange land especially when your Father, God Almighty is waiting with outstretched arms to receive us. Amen. In the book of Luke, chapter 15, verses 17 to 24 we find the story of the prodigal son. The story of the prodigal son is a reminder for us to come back home because many of God's people have gone astray, and that he is waiting patiently for the return of his beloved. He is rich and generous and awaits you at the gate. The devil keeps telling God's people they should leave the richness of their father's house because it is more prosperous to when one mingles with a world they can see. It will make them wise and wealthy, he says, when all the time prodigal sons and daughters fails to realize that true wealth was left behind, traded for painful, empty promises incapable of being fulfilled. They realize after some time that Satan is not capable of creating anything good and enjoys the ripple of his laughter as he directs them into the very midst of the raging famine. My friends, have you been listening to your memory of God's voice in your minds, telling you how much he loves you and wants you to come back to him? Have you ignored the promptings of his Holy Spirit telling you where you should step next, and you have been ignoring them? Have you wandered too far beyond the gates of your father's house and unsure of its direction? Are you now wondering how things are back home and if your room is still available? How long will you wait before you begin answering the pleadings of your heavenly father to come back to the gates where he awaits patiently for your return? Despite the miles you have drifted, he has shown you on the cross just how much he loves you and wants you back. If not his sacrifice to win you back beloved, what is it going to be? When will you return? Don't worry about the distance you have already trodden. Just start walking back and he'll provide the transport. Stop listening to your enemy, Satan. The devil will always encourage you to go into the opposite direction of God's will. He will always make strong attempts to let you believe his benefits are bigger and better than God's. He will try to convince you the barns he provides are overflowing from crops that are bountiful in nature. It is easy to believe him if you are not strong in Christ, since all he does is roam the face of the earth looking for anyone he can destroy, whether it be man, woman, or child. Seek God's advice first and always, before you make the next decision, before you take the next step. The Lord has extended to us all a gracious invitation in Isaiah 1 verses 18 to 20. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow, though they be red like crimson they shall be as wool. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Are you brothers and sisters walking away from what you believe to be a famine? Ask God first to identify the symptoms and give you the recommendations. Ellen G. White tell us to walk not in the shadow of the cross. 
Do not give expression to weeping, lamentation, and woe, but encourage your soul to hope and joy. The cross points upward to a living Savior, who is your advocate, and is pleading in your behalf. When you are deeply shadowed it is because Satan has interposed himself between you and the bright rays of the Son of Righteousness. Remember, despite the nature of your famine, no weapon that is formed against you will prosper, and every tongue that accuses you in judgment you will be condemned. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their vindication is from me, declares the Lord. Isaiah 54 verse 17. My family in Christ, remember to always consult with the Lord in all matters, and allow His Holy Spirit to lead you into making wise decisions for your life. Lean not on your own wisdom, especially when the source of perfect wisdom is waiting to provide you with flawless recommendations. Return today to the shelter of God's fold before it is too late. Find comfort amongst His holy people, His beloved remnant, and He will cause the famines which come from time to time to only surround you while you stay patient, while you stay confident and never draw back into destruction. God will ensure that you will always prosper in times of famine, when others seem to be starving. I lead you now with this psalm. Trust in the Lord, and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. May the perfect God of the universe continue to richly bless you, Bless your family and all who comes in contact with you today and always in Jesus' name. Amen.